Okay, everyone. Here's a pen I bought at the Philadelphia Pen Show. It is an Eagle eye drop fill pen, missing a cap. Some teeth marks right there. Good, strong jaw. And a little chip right there, but who cares about any of that? The nib is the thing. And as you can see, this nib has had trauma. Okay, anytime you want to focus would be handy. Can we focus on this or not? I'm using a note that someone left me anonymously. I was doing a project in the building's lobby that the building was invited to participate in making hats for an event. And the event was ongoing all Saturday, and I left before Saturday ended, but I left my degree for other people to make hats with. Uh, and someone seemed to think that I was leaving a mess, but I was leaving it up so other people could use it. Anyway, so here's this bent nib, and I thought I would try to fix it, even though you can't see me do it, because I can't get it in focus. Maybe if I work on it down here. But let me first show you how the nib writes at the moment. Even though it's bent, it has a really nice spring to it. Come on. So it can do this, even with its club foot, now, even with its nose out of joint. Um, so the, the problem is, am I going to completely screw it up instead of fixing it? Well, that's what you're going to watch. And that's what I'm going to try to do. So we've got, we've got three tools. Three, and of course I didn't bring one of them with me. I've got an, this thing, this solid bronze piece of casting. This is a uh, feed knockout block. But it's also, this thing is for used for, and this thing are used to straighten the nib cakes. Okay, where's the rest of it? I need a little tiny pliers. Not this one, a little tiny one. Hold on. Well, it must be right in front of me here because it's not over there, so it has to be here. Do you see my, any of you in the TV audience see my little pliers, my little nib pliers? It's, they're very tiny, which is why they're hard to find. Okay, I'll stand up and look over here again. I found them. See how tiny they are? They're just so cute. I would be lost without these things. So first of all, let's see if we can undo some of this bent bending. So with our little magic fingers we try to flatten this out a little bit. You know the nice thing about this bend is at least it's 
symmetrical. Both sides of the nib got damaged at the same time, at the, at the same way. So I probably made it look a little better, even though it's no longer can work because the, the nib, the tines are now crossed. So let's see if I can figure out a way to make this work better. So one of these I have. This is um, I think I'm using the wrong one of these things. These tools. I have one that has a better point on it. This one has a point is chipped. Let's see if I can find that one. Right here. It's right here in front of me. See? That works. So I'm trying to iron out the wrinkle. We'll call it that. There might be a an official term that pen collectors, pen repairmen use, but I'll just call it a wrinkle. Well, as you can see, it's a little, it looks a little better, but I can tell that it's not going to write any better at all because the nibs are, the tines are crossed. And again, this is this purchase at the Philadelphia Pen Show is part of a baggie full of parts and in the baggie full of parts was a rather nice Waterman pen right here. Also missing a cap but it has a perfectly lovely nib. So that and then there were other parts that had absolutely no value. Um, well, I don't really matter if it's some value. I can't even remember what they were. Might have been a mechanical pencil and something. I don't know what. But this nib and the barrel, um, they were sort of gravy. I didn't. So if I can fix this, this is, quote, the profit. And if I don't fix it, there's nothing lost, really. Well, it looks a lot better. I don't know if you can see. It's still bent, of course. But it looks a lot better. So let's see if we can continue to make it look better, and then I'll try to see if I can make it work. I, When it comes to either-or choices, I would... I'll... it could look ugly. And if it works, I don't care how ugly it looks. Um, sometimes a pen will work perfectly fine with a slightly bent nib. Um, and, you know, what I want to have happen, what I, in order for the pen to work, the two Tines have to be together. The two halves of the point nib, the iridium ball, have to be together. And the slit has to be tight so that the ink won't be interrupted by a big old gap. And the, the pen used to have sort of a big old gap like this when it was bent. So now I've, what I've done is seal, sealed this up. It's now tight. The balls, I think, are together. I haven't used a loop yet to see my handiwork, but I will right now. Except I'll make it so I can see. Okay. Well, it seems to be a lot better 
and let's put it in the nib of the pen and see if how it works. It looks bad, but I want to see if I if it will convey ink. Well, as you can see, that didn't work well. Well, it seems to be fine. In fact, it is works better now than it did before. It's a nice springy nib, except as you can see here, every once in a while it <clears throat> seems to catch on one of the tines when I go uphill. So let's see if I can fix this any better. <sighs> particular job is almost entirely going to be done using this burnisher. The worst kind of nib problems are when you have the very tip of the nib bent, not down, not up, but to the side. Those are the hardest ones to repair. Because you have to, you can't really, sometimes you can move both tines at the same time with the pliers, but most of the time you end up needing to sort of do one tine at a time. And to get that little iridium ball back to where it belongs is really tough. Now one of the things that you notice is this downward bend and that um, I will see if I can rectify by using this thing. The pliers to bend it up. When you bend it up you tend to make the end of the nib come apart, you know, where the, the ball doesn't meet the other ball. But um, here they seem to still be connected. Come on, bend up. There we go. See, that looks better. <clears throat> Let's see if it works better. Okay, does it work? It does. So, <clears throat> even though the nib still has a little bit of a issue in terms of, of clear sort of wrinkle. Um, it's working. Now I'm going to see if I can get that out without screwing the nib up. If this were my white dress shirt, I'd just apply some starch and set the iron on cotton and iron it to death. Can't do that here. Yeah, I, I have a feeling I might just have to live with the trauma that it has received. But 
it looks better and it works better than it did a little bit ago. Let's see if it still works. Makes a little noise. It's it's sort of not working as well as it should work. It's um, it's once it's pushing itself together. You know, they're supposed to be connected, but when you've got pressure pushing against each other, they want to do this and. Um, if one of them gets a slightly ahead of the other, or bends down a little bit more, you'll end up with it doing that. Um, what I seem to have done, this fine line seems a little thicker than it did before, so I may have on that extra mile and screwed it up a little bit. But let's see here. So this is a pen that I think if I have a cap that will match, which I may very well have, um, that will screw on. This nib, uh, I think, would make an, a calligrapher happy. If you're writing with standardized lines, ups and downs, I think it can work fine. The um, For an artist, I don't think I would give this pen to an artist, because they would end up sort of pushing it in the wrong direction and applying pressure, and it would really spring badly. So I guess I can call this a save. Um, those nib smiths out there would say, how dare you call that a save? But this is my pen and my YouTube channel and I'm calling it a save. So on your YouTube channel you can do whatever you want but for me I might be able to tweak this again but it's working well enough for my uses it's really a nice springy nib It's uh, surprisingly springy. It feels really strong. It's giving me a lot of pushback when I press down. It says I don't want to do this, but I will if you insist. And um, so, do I have a cap for this? Let's, let's go take a look. Follow me. Now it's been a while since I've looked in the drawers over here. This is my, but it would be one of these. What sort of pattern does this have? Now this is the scallop. This is the right drawer. So. No, that's too fat, that's too thin, this looks like a waterman cap to me, this looks like a slip cap to me, Come on, Pierre. Where are you? Well, I probably have a cap that will 
sit on it well enough to protect it. Um, the chances are this, this pen is going to end up sitting in my collection uh, rather than on my desk. So it'll it'll be fine. One day I'll find a cap. No. This cabinet is full of nibs and caps and pens and pens and parts. Uh, somewhere I'm sure I'll have it a part that'll work. Let's just borrow this. No, that doesn't work. Let's borrow one that we can, that'll work better. Okay, this one works to protect it. So now let's go back. <sighs> Back here, and this will just this cap, which is meant for a different pen, but it is the same chasing pattern, and it will pr protect the nib from another traumatic fall and another potential break. And so this. This is fine. This will do just fine for the moment. See? Now, those of you pen purists out there will say, well, that's not the right cap. And I said, yes, I know, I just told you that. It's like, you know, I have a friend in my building here that has a lovely Mercedes, no, BMW, Mercedes, a Mercedes Benz, and it's black, except it has a red bonnet, and it has a sort of white door, and it looks like a Mondrian, looks like Mondrian owned, owned the car, and I told him he should paint a little yellow square somewhere to make it look like that famous Mondrian painting. So this isn't quite a Mondrian painting, just like that car. Um, I'm sorry, this isn't a legitimate Eagle pen, and that car was not a legitimate Mercedes-Benz in perfect case ish shape, but it made me smile, and this pen uh, makes me smile enough. And if I use it here on my desk, all by myself in the privacy of my own home, no one will shame me for having a cap that doesn't match. And neither will you. Ta-da!